Hey everyone, my name is Lance, and I'm going to show you how to make these propeller-powered cars. This project is so fun to play with, and there are some great opportunities to talk about some fundamental physics concepts. Okay, let's begin. First, make a rectangle frame out of craft sticks. Now for the wheels. You can drill a hole into bottle caps, but I prefer using these plastic wheels that I found online. Fit the dowel into the wheel, and if it's sliding off, wrap a small piece of tape around the end. Slip a straw over the dowel, and put another wheel on the other side. Make sure it can spin freely. Repeat one more time, and then tape the wheels onto the frame. Now for the propeller assembly. Overlap and glue three sticks together like this. Then gather a plastic propeller. If you live in the US, you can find these propellers on Amazon. Otherwise, you can find one of these propellers in these balsa wood plane kits. Fit the propeller on, and then bend, glue, and tape on a paperclip. Now to combine the two. The propeller needs to be lifted off the ground. You can use these wooden cubes to support the vertical post. It's not totally necessary, but it does make it a lot stronger. And finally, glue the propeller onto the support post. And lastly, hook on two rubber bands from the propeller to the paperclip. Face the propeller toward you, and then wind it clockwise. Keep winding until you can see the rubber bands being knotted around themselves for the full length of the propeller shaft. Hold it steady with two hands, and then let go. If you like this video so far, please pledge on Patreon, where you can get access to these lesson plans, project sheets, and more. Okay, so now let's explore why this works, or rather, why it works so well. Because obviously, when you turn the propeller, you are winding up these rubber bands, which is storing lots of potential energy, and then that is converted into kinetic energy in the form of the spinning propeller. Because the propeller blades are angled, it is generating thrust by pushing air this way, which causes the car to propel the other way. But what is making it go so fast and so far? In this particular design, there are two main variables. The first are the wheels and the overall weight of the car. These lightweight plastic wheels will work best because of inertia. So inertia is the tendency for an object to resist change in its motion. So a moving thing wants to keep moving, something that is not moving wants to continue to not move. In our case, we definitely want this car to move. We want it to move fast, and so we want it to have very low inertia. Inertia is heavily influenced by mass, so if we had big clunky cardboard wheels or some other heavier material, that is going to take a lot more energy to get it moving, to overcome that resistance to change in its motion. Additionally, the tread on these wheels is so thin, it barely makes contact with the ground, and that produces very little friction, which, again, helps the car overcome that inertia. And one aside about the wheels that's not related to inertia. Having these wide-sit wheels helps with the stability of the car, because if we had a very narrow frame, the force of the unwinding rubber bands can actually cause the whole car to flip over. The second variable is the rubber bands. The length, the thickness, and the number of rubber bands have a huge effect on how fast the propeller spins, as well as how much force it generates over a given period of time. Now, you might think that adding more rubber bands is going to make it go farther and faster. And that's true to a point. But if you add too many, the force of the rubber bands can cause the car to flip over, to veer off course, or spend all of its energy in a flash before the car even has a chance to really get started. On the other hand, if there are too few rubber bands, or not the right kinds, it will not be able to produce enough thrust to get the car going at a high speed or far enough. And it also just might take forever to wind up. So I found that two long rubber bands tends to work pretty well, but it's not necessarily the best combination. You should definitely experiment with different combinations of rubber bands to find the one that makes the car go the farthest or the fastest. All right, that's it for this video. And again, please pledge on Patreon if you want some teaching tools to go along with this project or just to show your support for these kinds of videos. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.